friends, wavy babes, and silver sisters. If you are new, my name is Carrie Jessica. Normally I'm talking about gray hair, wavy hair, the curly girl method and ways to modify it. Sometimes I open things I spent too much money on and if those things sound like they are interesting to you, hit that subscribe button and hang out with me. Now today's video is a little bit different. This is the month of October and October is dysautonomia awareness and yours truly has dysautonomia. You will see in the beginning I was playing with a spoon. I will tell you what's up with that at the end of this. You will also notice that instead of gray hair, I'm sporting blue hair. Turquoise is the color of the dysautonomia awareness ribbon, so I decided to sport some on my head. If you are curious as to how I change the color of my hair in a very, very safe, hair healthy, very, very temporary way, hit that notification bell for when I create new content because that is the next video that I have coming. So through the month of October, I will be sharing a little bit here and there about what it is like to have dysautonomia to help bring some awareness. Today, I'm going to go over some of the super common symptoms that people with dysautonomia deal with. A lot of people are familiar with the term POTS. It's the more common of the things you could be diagnosed with with dysautonomia. And it stands for postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. It means when you stand up, your body is having an abnormal response to the postural change. Tachycardia meaning your heart rate is above average. So it's pretty normal for your heart rate to change about 35 beats per minute when you stand up. When you have POTS, your heart rate can change drastically just from standing up. It causes you to feel dizzy, nauseous, sometimes even pass out. Now, passing out is not a staple of dysautonomia. Many, many people have dysautonomia and never pass out. I myself have had dysautonomia for over 10 years. I have not passed out in probably two years. But there was a time when I was passing out multiple times a day to the point that I was a regular wheelchair user to avoid passing out in public. And it isn't just an element of embarrassment when you pass out in public. It is actually dangerous. Depending on where you're at, you can hit your head and really cause some trauma. With that said, just to throw this in there, most people who use a wheelchair do have use of their legs. So when you see a photo of someone in a wheelchair who has stood up for a moment, maybe for the pledge, maybe to reach something at the grocery store, do not be an ableist. Do not share that in some kind of aha gotcha moment because most people who use a wheelchair use it as a medical device, a tool to help them. It is not because they have zero use of their legs. It is because they don't have the same ability that you do. So don't be a Another common issue with dysautonomia is your blood pressure. Your blood pressure can drop very low or shoot really sky high. And a lot of times your heart rate and your blood pressure are trying to work together. But when you have dysautonomia, it's like there's a broken connection. So your heart rate could be jumping up really high and your blood pressure could go, oh, whoa, we need to chill. So your blood pressure is dropping, your heart rate is skyrocketing and your body hits the reset button. And that is when you either have very lightheadedness, dizziness, or even syncope. Another common issue with dysautonomia is your digestive system. When you eat food, you do not have to think or do anything to make your digestive system work. When you have dysautonomia, you can run either fast or slow, meaning you can have gastral dumping where your body is not getting the nutrients from the food and it just goes straight through and you're spending a lot of time in the bathroom. Or you could have what I deal with, which is gastroparesis, which is a partial paralysis of the stomach, meaning that there are sections of my stomach that are literally paralyzed. They just can't get their act together. When this happens, it becomes really difficult for your body to effectively digest food, meaning you're not getting all of the nutrients from your food. Your food actually sits in your stomach for far too long. It can become very painful and cause a lot of bloating. Another not so fun element of dysautonomia is your eyes. Your vision does so many things on its own without you having to think about it. When you go from a dark room and then all of a sudden you open the door and it is bright outside, your eyes take a second to adjust. Your pupils are really dilating and constricting to help regulate how much light comes in. And those things do take a second. They can be very unpleasant for someone who's light sensitive. However, when you have dysautonomia, you cannot guarantee that it is even going to happen effectively. So we're talking about almost being light sensitive times a hundred. Another issue with vision is your eyes automatically adjust when you are reading a menu at a restaurant and then look up at the waiter. That happens from your autonomic nervous system. The ciliary muscle in your eye literally adjusts so that you can focus on the waiter and focus on your menu. 
When you have autonomic issues, that may or may not happen. For example, for me, I actually was not able to drive a vehicle for years because my ciliary muscle was doing whatever it wanted, whenever it wanted. It was basically like a mild version of a fun house where everywhere I looked had a mild curve or sway to it because my eyes were not adjusting properly. It makes it very difficult to focus on the road where you're seeing your steering wheel just at the bottom of your vision and then your peripheral vision seeing things like street signs and even trees and other vehicles and then your main view in front of you being the car that's in front of you. I was not able to see all of those different things and take in that information well. Things looked curved. It was very difficult to tell if things were close to me or far away from me because I couldn't tell at what point in that curve was real. Another issue with dysautonomia is your body temperature regulation. Just the simple autonomic responses such as sweating or getting the chills. When you have dysautonomia, your body isn't doing those things at appropriate times because it's misfiring all the time. So your brain could literally send a signal to your body that you're cold and then all of a sudden you've got the chills even though it is not appropriate to have chills for the temperature that the room is. I personally deal with something called Raynard syndrome, which is in line with my dysautonomia, but it could also be a separate condition on its own. Meaning I could be in a room watching TV in a normal 72 degree beautiful room with a blanket on and all of a sudden my body will start pooling blood away from my extremities to keep the middle of my body meaning like your organs more protected only it's not necessary for that to happen so it causes my fingers to turn blue sometimes kind of a purplish color it's a little scary it it's not numb but it feels <sighs> It feels really painful, like a cold burning. So oftentimes when that is happening to me, more often than normal, I will be wearing compression gloves or even a compression sleeve to help tell my body what to do. Another common issue that we deal with with dysautonomia is chronic fatigue. Your body falls asleep and goes through sleep cycles on its own without you having any control over it. So when you have autonomic dysfunction, your body could literally at any moment decide to do what's called adrenal dumping, meaning all of a sudden you're sleeping, but your body acts like something amazing, exciting, or terrifying has just happened. So it disrupts your sleep constantly as you're waking up because your adrenal glands are not working in an appropriate way for when you're asleep. I do wanna say for the most part, dysautonomia is a quality of life issue. I do have several family members that have dysautonomia at different levels and in different ways. So I've seen different progressions of it. My neurologist personally has listed me as someone who has chronic and progressive dysautonomia. It is very difficult to get a baseline of information on dysautonomia. Even once you've been diagnosed and you've got those terms that I've had four different doctors label my diagnoses completely differently. So you and I both may have dysautonomia with the same exact symptoms with the same exact test results but if we go to two different doctors we're going to be supplied different information if you're feeling like you're dealing with some of these symptoms check the description box below i will be adding some resources if you're feeling like your symptoms line up with dysautonomia and you're not finding much support in the medical community when you go to your doctor bring these symptoms and say i do believe that i'm having an issue with my autonomic nervous system and that might set you on the path of getting testing to get a more accurate diagnosis. So let me know in the comments down below, are you struggling with dysautonomia? Are you on a treatment plan that's working for you? Do you have a different, completely separate chronic illness? The chronic illness community is so huge and we really are here to support each other. So now onto this spoon. If you're wondering what the spoon is all about, the spoon theory was written by a woman named Christine who was sharing a meal with a friend of hers who asked what it felt like to have a chronic illness. So Christine took all of the spoons from their table as well as the surrounding tables and showed the spoons in a mathematical and metaphorical explanation of energy. So if you have not yet hit that subscribe button and that bell for notifications when I create new content, next week I'll be showing you how I turned my hair blue as well as another dysautonomia content update. I will be going over some homeopathic things that you can do for dysautonomia, things that you could do at home right now to improve your quality of life. Until then, you can find me in other places on the internet. I am on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook. I'm over on TikTok. I'm on Pinterest. That's it. That's all the places. I never know how to say... I never know how to say goodbye on here, but goodbye. May many spoons be blessed upon you. <laughs>